Okay, uh, this is a Minter update, I should say. Um, first time I was talking, uh, I was just ripping out the boards and whatnot from the Minter, and now we got all our parts. I etched the board, and there's the Duino. You can see my really shitty solder job, but that's all right. Um, For the motor controllers, we're using uh, L293Ds because each of our motors only draws uh, an eighth of an amp, which is pretty good, and that's under full load. Um, our power pack is uh, not here, it's back ordered right now, but we did have a 9 volt one, which will work for now. Um, now everything is going to be powered by 12 volts eventually, whenever that's done being back ordered. Um, a few things, whenever I was programming this, is the potentiometers are so old and crappy that the, it, the each of the axes were like stuttering. So I had to rig up the code to work with what we had. Um, and I got it pretty stable. Um, now this is the trainer arm here. I, f I move it down. Also, we're a little bit more limited than uh, with the original equipment. I remember whenever it did work, it actually worked pretty well. But we have, hold on here, bring it back, I'm using pulse width modulation for the motors, um, and that also helps with the stuttering, and in fact that's the reason why there is no stutter. Um, I tried just regular digital I.O., and that was a no-go, and these axes work too. and obviously the gripper. So that's pretty neat. Um, it's all controlled by this. Uh, my next step is to clean up my code because it is really craptastic and it's a lot of copy and paste stuff to be honest. After I got uh, the axes working correctly um, it, it turned out pretty well. Um, there's only one axis where I had to do some sort of, uh, uh, give it some sort of bonus to how far it can move. I think it was, let's see what we got here. Yeah, it was this axis right here. I gave it a uh, 1.2 multiplier because it wouldn't go as far as I wanted it to. And now it does, so, oh, let's see, um, pretty much, um, I'm using some of the original plugs that were on it just because it was a lot easier for whenever I was making the board. Uh, a couple things I would change is probably how everything is placed in here, in the circuitry, I should say, because it was a son of a bitch to try and plug in to that. Um, let's see, my next step is to make it to where you can do uh, serial inputs to make it move to designated locations. Um, and I plan on making a second one of these because we got like eight of these things in our storage room. Um, oh, another problem we had. Oh, excuse me. Uh, the trainer arms. Um, the two, well, I had had one, and it was all fine until it came to this axis right here. And then it decided not to work anymore. So I ripped out the potentiometer and replaced it with another potentiometer. This is actually the one that I ripped apart. And it still didn't work. And I hooked up. Uh, a meter after I replaced it 
I found out that the wire was supplying 10k ohm or 10 meg ohm resistance. So we had some sort of problem there with the potentiometers. It's probably from how old they are. Now I did get an actual trainer arm that did work correctly, which is the one that I'm currently using. And so now we don't have that problem. Um, yeah, so two of them on the exact same axis did not work. So I find that kind of amusing. But I, after I get done with my code, I'll place it up on the web so you guys can see it. It's pretty basic, straightforward, and basically all it is is potentiometer syncing. Um, what? Thanks.